Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where this person wonders if they're in the right or the wrong for pressing charges on someone they know after they shaved their head in the middle of the night without permission. Now, the beauty of this story is that it starts on r slash am I the jerk almost two years ago, but just a few days ago at the time of recording, we got an update to the whole situation. So first of all, we're looking at r slash am I the jerk at the original post, and then we'll see what the conclusion was. Without further ado, here we go. This is a good one. Am I the jerk for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep? For context, a relative of what used to be a close friend of mine, whom we'll call Gary for this story, contracted cancer. I, a mid-twenties male, was sympathetic and even contributed $100 to a donation pool for their treatments. But Gary came to me one day and took his hat off to reveal a freshly shaven head. He told me that everyone in his family was doing it in support of his relative, and so were a lot of our mutual friends. Then he asked that I get on the bandwagon. I told him I didn't want to shave my head because I like my hair. My hair is black, regularly combed and well styled. He said I could just get a wig or something and had actually brought his shaver kit. He was unboxing it when I told him this was not happening. I don't even really know his relative that he's doing this for, so I'm not doing it. End of discussion. He called me a jerk and left angry. We didn't speak for a week. Then last Saturday, I got invited to a party at another close friend's house. There I found out that Gary had tried the same thing on several other friends and only a couple of them actually did shave their heads. Gary wasn't at the party, so I had a blast hanging out, playing video games, listening to rock music. But I had way too much to drink and I couldn't drive home, so they said I could just sleep upstairs. I passed that on a bed and it was a blissful sleep till I was shaken awake by another friend who told me that Gary had showed up late at night and they caught him shaving my head while I was passed out. I saw what I looked like in a mirror and wanted to scream like I was in a horror movie. Gary even shaved off one of my eyebrows. Gary was still there and acting proud of himself, saying, now you're gonna have to shave off the rest, just like me, lol. I was furious though and called the cops. When they got there, Gary fully admitted to what he'd done to me and even said he was justified. The police didn't seem to think so, as this classified as a form of assault. They asked me if I wanted to press charges and the first words out of my mouth were, hell yes. Gary cussed me out while they took him away in cuffs. I tried getting my hair restyled into something presentable, but there was no saving it. And now I'm bald too. Now, a bunch of Gary's family are telling me to drop the charges because Gary was off his meds and didn't mean to do it. I was like, what the frick? I never knew he was on meds, but I still refuse to drop the charges. It will take months to grow my hair back the way it was. But all of the calls and messages from Gary's relatives are starting to get to me. Just about everyone else in our friend group has cut Gary out though. And they say that I'm doing the right thing by not dropping the charges. So now I'm divided. Am I the jerk for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep? Okay, now before we get into that update that I promised you, which was posted just a few days ago, firstly, my initial thoughts on this post, which was posted over a year and a half ago now. I just don't think in any way, in my opinion, this is, that you can be seen as the jerk here. You could argue it's a little bit extreme that you're going to that length to press charges on someone that's just shaved a bit of your hair and your eyebrow, but that is legally assault. And if that is the case, then therefore you are well within reason to press charges. And ultimately, if you've said to somebody, no, I'm not doing that, and then they've done that to you while you're asleep, that is just disgraceful, disgusting behavior, and they do deserve to be punished. So if something like that is punishable and you are up for it and you want to do it, yeah, I see nothing wrong with saying, you know what, no, I'm pressing charges. In terms of the meds, there's absolutely no reason as to why that can possibly be your fault. That's on Gary, or I guess the people helping Gary, his family, but yeah, mostly on Gary. And in terms of people that might think, okay, but he was doing this for a good means, sure, but it has to be up to the individual to decide whether they want to get involved in that. And as OP explicitly said, they barely even know the person that has cancer. If you barely know someone that has cancer, you're just not going to shave your head as much as it is a nice thing to do. And OP donated $100. Is that not enough? Nonetheless, here we go. Let's see what happened in this one. Here is the update. A friend of mine just showed me a video yesterday in which my old post had been read. Honestly, I'd nearly forgotten about it since I was only there to ask if I was the jerk or not. And since I don't want to go through the pain of trying to do an update on r slash the jerk, I thought I'd just do it here. 
since Entitled spells out Gary pretty well. This is, by the way, on r slash Entitled People. Other than that shaving incident, he tried to get us to partially pay for his food multiple times by combining the check and dividing it equally when he always got the most expensive thing on the menu. And once even pulled the I forgot my wallet bit. He was described as a neckbeard by multiple people, including women he flirted with. He tried to get a married neighbor woman that was older than him to have an affair with her and then later egged her apartment door when she refused. That one I only learned about a couple of months after my original post. And no, Gary never saw consequences for doing that. I also learned he stole several video games and DVDs from friends, mooch food and drink out of their fridges, and even went through a period as a squatter for two months by refusing to leave a house he'd been let into by a former tenant, and the landlord actually paid him to leave. Gary is also an extreme hypocrite who contradicted himself more than a corrupt politician. For example, one minute he'd be anti-vax, the next he'd be complaining about other people who weren't getting the C-19 vaccine. Pretty sure he never got it too. I can't believe I ever had any sympathy for this man. So then getting into what happened after Gary shaved Opie's head. Gary's family harassed me and tried to make me drop the charges. I not only didn't drop the charges, but I also reported that harassment to the police. Only problem is, it didn't bloody stop. In fact, it got worse, mainly from Gary's mother, whom I can see where Gary got his charming personality from. She showed up to my apartment a couple of weeks after the shaving incident to scream at me that I knew nothing about what they were going through, and her little hair wasn't a big deal. I told her my hair was a big deal to me, and what Gary did was inexcusable. Well, that earned me a slap on the face, followed by a swift kick to the nuts, followed by a few more kicks to my body after I went down. It was all recorded by a camera that I had watching the front door. The landlord wouldn't let me put in a ring doorbell cam. One of my neighbors saw her and screamed at her that they'd be calling the police. Gary's mum ran and I ended up going to the hospital with minor injuries, mostly just bruises, a black eye and a sore groin. Gary's mother got arrested and I filed a lawsuit against her for attacking me. I saw her in court twice for both her assault on me and the lawsuit I filed for her assault. This woman had taken several self-defense classes over the years, so she knew how to fight. That had the judge consider her a trained individual, and she was sentenced to six months in jail, given two years probation, and ordered to pay my medical bills. She actually cried to the judge about the money, but he wasn't having it. It took some time to see her in court again for my lawsuit against her, as she was out of jail by then. I was awarded 10,000 for the harassment, emotional damages, and lost work hours, and she had to pay all court and lawyer fees, which she cried about again because she didn't want to pay anything to the man who'd ruined her and her son's lives. But she had the money for both court cases because she had no problem paying. But around that time, I heard Gary's relative with cancer passed away. I don't know any details, just that they passed on. I admit that was sad, but again, I never knew this person, but Gary made their condition his hill to die on when he tried to make an example out of me. Gary got some probation and community service for what he did to my hair, and he cut contact with our entire friend group and eventually moved away. Where to? I don't know. I don't care either. As for my hair, well, it grew back just fine. Took nearly half a year to get it back how it was. My boss had me put it out of sight for a while, and I was wearing a hat everywhere for at least a month. I did take that 10k I got in the lawsuit and combine it with my savings for a down payment on a house. So I've since moved into a much better abode. I also have a girlfriend now that's living with me. It was a bit soon for her to move in, but there were extenuating circumstances. We're making it work though, and I'm happy. So there we go then. Good to see some proper justice for something that, yeah, you could say is a little bit innocuous, you know, just shaving someone's hair. But hair makes up such an important part of someone's life, right? Hair gives you confidence. For people with great hair, they can see it as one of their best attributes. So to remove that from somebody for literally no reason when they're asleep against their will. Yeah, I mean, it is assault. And I'm glad to see, as I said, that there was some proper justice done to big old Gary. What I love as well, that this became a family affair. Gary's mum, I, I presume that this is one of the reasons why Gary acts this way right now. His mum, clearly so protective and so enabling, saying, no, come on, it's fine. And by the way, I'm trained in some sort of combat and I'm gonna kick you in the balls. Like, good, really good. Yeah, good to see them both uh, having some charges put against them. And that 10K going to good use. Great story, love the update. 
It's very rare that we get a Redditor come back after almost two years to give us an update on the situation. But OP, thank you very much for doing that and concluding this story. All the best. All right then, now back to r slash am I the jerk. Would I be the jerk if I go on vacation instead of my brother's wedding? My brother, Tom, who is 36, and I, a 26-year-old woman, have never had a really solid relationship. Due to our age gap, we didn't spend much time together, and by the time I was old enough to develop a personality, he was moved out of the house. For the last two years, my brother and his fiance, Sarah, have been planning their wedding, and it's coming up in September. I was asked to be a bridesmaid, I figured I was only asked as a courtesy since I'm her soon-to-be sister-in-law, but I still took it seriously. I've been a bridesmaid for the last two years. Just a few weeks ago, I managed to save up to buy the $800 bridesmaid dress. Overall, in the last two years, between group outings to parties, dinners, lunches, clothes, etc., I spent thousands of dollars. Eventually, all the girls in the wedding and I became extremely close and I started to get hyped for the wedding. Sarah recently got close with her brother's wife, Becky. Last week, she dropped the ball on me that she no longer wants me to be a bridesmaid and she'd prefer if Becky take my place. It broke my heart a little, but it's her wedding and it's not my place to tell her how to run it, so I said, fine. Yesterday, I went to my brother's house to pick up the bridesmaid dress and was going to see if I could return it since it was within the time frame. Sarah was completely appalled and said that Becky was going to wear it since she and I are the same size. I said that would be fine, but they'd have to pay me the 800 for it. Sarah said that Becky couldn't afford it and I should just be nice and let her use it and said that I could keep it after the wedding. I explained that I'm not just giving away the dress and I'm not ever going to use it after the wedding. After some bickering back and forth, I just ended up taking it and leaving. My brother and Sarah tried to compromise with me and say that I could be the assistant flower girl and I felt offended at that offer. After I said no, they then said that Becky could give me 250 bucks for it. Again, no. And I returned the dress and got a full refund. I told them I understand that it's their wedding, but they're being extremely disrespectful to me and I don't need to deal with it. And I'm not going to the wedding. Today, my coworker says that she has an extra round trip plane ticket to go to Miami that she'll sell to me for half price. Plus, I would have to pay for half the hotel and I can go hang out with her in Florida. The only downside is that I'll be in Florida for the week of my brother's wedding. So, will I be the jerk if I just go party in Miami instead of going to my brother's wedding? Okay, immediate reaction here is no, you absolutely wouldn't be the jerk in this situation if you didn't go to the wedding. You've been absolutely used and abused for want of a better term. First of all, spent thousands on your dress and all of the bridesmaid stuff and probably like some hen do and that sort of rubbish. And then you've put loads of time into it. And for all that, just to be shot back in your face. First of all, saying, yeah, you're no longer the bridesmaid. Very soon, close to the wedding, that is. And then saying, you can be the assistant flower girl if you want, which by the way, as far as I know, it's just not a thing. That is just the ultimate disrespect. So I see no problem with you just going, you know what? Nah, can't be, can't be bothered. I'm just not going to come at all. Have a good one, lads enjoy and i'll enjoy miami now on the other hand you could say be the bigger person and just accept that these two are just kind of mugging you off but it is still your brother and in theory you could just still go and just be like a you know a normal guest but i don't know ultimately i'd feel so disrespected i'd just be like yeah i can't be asked i'm just not going I'm going to go have a good time with someone that actually wants to be with me. Maybe that's a bit too harsh. Let me know your thoughts down below. And now for our final post, am I the jerk for laughing at my brother's tattoo? This is a pretty cut and dry scenario. My little brother has been in a string of relationships since he was young enough to know what dating was. On several occasions, the relationships ended because he was caught cheating with another girl. These are just the ones that I know about. There could be more. In fact, his current girlfriend was the other woman from his previous relationship. He, I'll call him Danny, still lives with my parents, and I headed over on the 4th for barbecue. When he reached out for a hug, I noticed his arm was super red, and he showed me his brand new tattoo that he'd literally just got. In huge words, it said loyalty in cursive. Where I might be the jerk is that I kind of laughed as soon as I saw it, and I didn't try to hide it at all. It wasn't a dramatic laugh. He said, what's so funny? And I just said his tattoo was really ironic. He got angry and stormed off to his room and didn't join my parents and I and our sister for dinner. I told them what happened and they said that I was being a jerk. And my sister said that people are allowed to change. But I personally think that he's acting like a child by locking himself in his room and that I shouldn't be blamed for a 25-year-old storming off. No, 
You have to laugh at that. And if your brother cannot see the funny side of his new tattoo, then that's on him. Like if I was in his shoes and I'd done those same things and I got that tattoo and my older brother, I'm 25 by the way, and my older brother laughed at me, I would just say, you know what? That is completely fair. Maybe I'd be a little bit annoyed by it and say, look, I'm trying to change, please don't laugh. But I could have no qualms with someone laughing at me who knows that I've cheated multiple times in the past and then have the most ironic tattoo of all time. It's just a fact. And maybe the fact that you can't see yourself in that light and don't understand why this is objectively funny that you've got that tattoo is, is your own lack of self-awareness and the reason why you're still doing these things and cheating and probably thinking it's not bad. I don't know. Maybe it's time for, uh, for Opie's brother to have a look in the mirror and think, yeah, what I'm actually doing here is this tattoo have I got this to try and prove to myself that I can be loyal or am I just clutching at straws? I don't know. Nonetheless, it's a very funny tattoo to get given your history. And um, yeah, OP, you're not the joke for laughing. It's funny. So guys, that is going to do it for this one. Really hope you enjoyed these r slash am I the jerk posts and that update as well. That was special. I enjoyed it a lot. If you are new to the channel and you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and follow on whatever platform you're on. New content coming every single day. So hit the notification bell and you'll never miss an upload from me. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you tomorrow for some more Reddit stories.